I've made lots of social mistakes or faux pas in my life to piss off the other humans, so he's three of the most memorable. Also, at the end, I'll give you one piece of practical advice that you can use straight away to help you make friends and influence people. Mistake number one, the obese co-worker. I used to work in IT, and one day a couple of the guys who used to sit in my vicinity asked if I wanted to walk into the city and have lunch with them at a fancy restaurant. I typically didn't like going out for lunch, especially to expensive restaurants, but since I was new to that department, I thought I'd better not rock the boat and just go along for the ride. There were about five of us, and one of them was morbidly obese. Let's call him Sam. Sam wasn't very tall, but was at least 50 or 60 kilograms overweight. He wasn't very old, I guess he was in his mid-twenties. When he walked, he got sweaty very easily, and after about 100 meters or so, he was starting to look a bit puffed. Anyway, it took us about 10 minutes to walk to the restaurant, but when we arrived, Sam wasn't there. One of the other guys asked where Sam was, and I replied, I don't know, I hope he didn't have a heart attack. I suppose in the moment I was kind of joking, but I was also genuinely concerned for Sam. Unsurprisingly, the half joke didn't go down too well. The rest of the group started looking at me in disgust. They were acting like that by me merely mentioning heart attack, I somehow made Sam have a real heart attack. One guy even openly attacked me. You shouldn't say stuff like that. Sam's a nice guy. Obviously, my intention was never to say that Sam wasn't a nice guy. I simply made an off-the-cuff remark about Sam's lack of physical fitness, and it failed. Those people pretty much didn't talk to me ever again. Anyway, I'm sure you're all wondering what happened to Sam. About 10 minutes later, he rocked up. He was sweaty and hot and red in the face. His shirt was half undone, and when he entered the restaurant, he immediately threw himself down on the sofa in the foyer. The other guys all raced up to him and asked if he was okay. They kept looking over their shoulders back at me with glares of disdain. It turns out Sam had taken a rest about halfway down the street on one of the public benches. However, apart from the profuse sweating, he was A-OK. -okay. So yeah, that was my first mistake. Don't make negative comments about people's health, especially in front of their friends. Mistake number two, the dishwashing girl. When I was living in Japan, I got to know an Australian girl at work. Let's call her Julie. Well, Julie wasn't exactly a girl. I was in my mid-twenties, and she was in her thirties, I suppose. But we got on well, and we'd often get together for a cup of tea or coffee after work. After about a year, Julie ended up quitting her job and going and travelling around Europe and Russia with her sister. About a year later, I got an unexpected email from her telling me that she's planning to come back to Japan for a visit, but that she had nowhere to stay. I told her, no worries, come over and stay at my place for a week. By the way, this relationship was completely platonic. I had a Japanese girlfriend at the time, and Julie knew that. We were strictly friends and never had any sort of romantic attraction or anything like that. Anyway, she was staying at my place and showing me endless photos of her trip in Europe and Russia. I remember her telling me a story of her towel and shoes being stolen from a Russian beach. She even took a photo of the perpetrator as he was walking off with her possessions. But despite having photographic evidence, the police never found him. Or more likely, didn't even bother looking for him. So back in my apartment, Julie was being a really nice guest. She often offered to wash up after we ate, so I let her. However, she had this one bad habit. I used to buy this small bottle of Japanese ultra-strength concentrated dishwashing liquid. The idea was to put a little bit directly on a sponge and clean up from there. It even had a diagram on the back of the bottle. But when she washed up, she'd squirt it all over the dishes directly, and she'd do that multiple times throughout the wash. Within three days, one bottle of concentrate was gone. I felt like I had to say something. I told her that it was Japanese ultra-strength concentrated dishwashing liquid, and that you only needed a small amount of it on a sponge. Anyway, that didn't go down too well, and she got a bit defensive. She was saying stuff like, I'm a grown woman, I think I know how to wash up dishes, and so on. The next day, she had packed her bags and said that she had to go over and see another friend. I never saw her again. So yeah, that was my second mistake. Don't tell grown women how to wash up. Mistake number three, the subway sun. I used to play games with a group of guys on a Saturday night. I've spoken about them in other videos. One day, one of the guys, let's call him Steve, was proudly telling us about his 14-year-old son getting a new job at Subway. The first thing I said was, footlongs and dirty vegetables. 
I'd known a couple of people who had worked at Subway, and both of them told me that they were explicitly asked by their managers not to wash the vegetables. I don't know if that was Subway's policy or not, or if the vegetables came pre-washed. It doesn't really matter. The point is, I used to joke about Subway's vegetables not being very clean. Unsurprisingly, the joke didn't go down too well with Steve. He took the joke as a personal attack on his own flesh and blood. His son just got a new job, and here I am, attacking the company he was working for. Anyway, now I don't see Steve anymore, but I presume his son is still selling unwashed vegetables at Subway. So yeah, that was my third mistake. Don't say anything negative when people are gloating about their children. So they were three of my most memorable social faux pas. As promised, I have one piece of practical advice that can help you all avoid making the same mistakes I did. Don't say anything. Only listen. Yes, this age-old advice is still relevant today. People like talking about themselves. The best thing you can do is just shut up and listen. I'm not saying that you can't say anything, but make sure that when you do speak, it's positive and makes the person feel good about themselves. It's far more important to be interested than it is to be interesting. Listen, be curious, give compliments, and ask questions. But most importantly, make the person feel important. Don't do what I did and joke about somebody's son getting a job in a company that sells dirty vegetables. Don't joke that an obese colleague might have a heart attack at any moment. And certainly, don't tell a grown woman how to wash up. These are surefire ways to piss people off.